Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to practice naming organic compounds using the IUPAC system. All of the molecules we'll see today contain at least one double bond. That means they are alkenes, or compounds derived from alkenes. Let's go step by step and apply the naming rules together. Let's begin with compound A. The very first step is always to find the longest chain that contains the double bond. Here, we can count six carbons in a row. So the parent chain is hexene. Next, we need to number the chain so that the double bond gets the lowest possible number. The double bond starts at carbon 2, so the base name is hex2-ene. Once the parent chain and the double bond are set, the next step is to identify the substituents. On carbon 2, we see a methyl group. On carbon 4, there's another methyl group. That gives us 2,4-dimethyl. Finally, we put everything together, the substituents, the parent chain, and the double bond position. The complete name of compound A is 2,4-dimethylhex2-ene. Now let's analyze compound B. The molecule is a seven-membered ring, so the base is cyclohept. Inside the ring, we see three alternating double bonds. That means it's a trine. The next step is numbering. We always start at a double bond and number around the ring to give the lowest positions to all the double bonds. This way, the double bonds are at carbons 1, 3, and 5. But notice something. If we number the other way around, the double bonds are still at 1, 3, and 5. So what makes the difference? The ring has a methyl group attached. In the first direction, the methyl group is on carbon 2. In the other direction, it would be on carbon 5. Since 2 is lower than 5, we choose the first numbering. That gives us the correct name, 2-methylcyclohepta-1-3-5-triane. Now that we've finished naming compound B, Let's move on to compound C. This compound is built on a five-membered ring, so the parent name is cyclopen. We notice a double bond in the ring. To name it correctly, we begin numbering at the double bond, giving it the lowest possible position. That places it between carbons 1 and 2, which makes the parent structure cyclopent 1-ene. However, there's an important convention. When a ring contains only one double bond, its position is automatically assumed to be between carbons 1 and 2. For this reason, we usually omit the number and simply write cyclopentene. Next, we identify the substituents. On carbon 1, there's a methyl group. On carbon 2, another methyl group. And on carbon 3, we find an ethyl group. When writing the full name, substituents must be listed in alphabetical order. Since ethyl comes before methyl, the final name of this compound is 3-ethyl-1-2-dimethylcyclopent-1-ene. Or more simply, 3-ethyl-1-2-dimethylcyclopentene. And that's it. Naming becomes simple when you follow the same steps. Find the parent, number the double bond, Add the substituents and put them in order. Stick to this system and you'll master it in no time. See you in the next lesson.